that is a uh, part of the soundtrack from threesome is it three ways i think it's three ways that's what it is three ways on hulu i have not watched it yet but i'm being convinced to come in and dip my toe <laughs> in the water and my entry point is the composer because yes. I, I i know some composers we know composers but composers for television and movies black come on through let me welcome to the show <laughs> yes for the first time I, i'm like i need to know all of the things let me welcome miss emily Sankofa. Hi. Correct. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thanks for coming. So, and I'll, young. You said black and yes, and young too. Yes. Okay. Yes. Very I'm, young. Oh, that's the voice of Renee Silo. Let me make sure I get her uh good enough mother. <laughs> so how young are you, Emily? Um, I'm about to be 33. Okay, that is so, pretty young. Yeah. That's yeah. Jesus age. I'm I ain't mad at that. Right, right. I'm entering my Jesus year soon. So yes. yeah, that is correct. <laughs> yes. Uh and I was asking you because your your name is Emo E M M O Lay, like the lay that people put around their necks. Uh Sankofa. <laughs> I said, Did you name yourself? Because that's a very uh that's a very Kwanzaa, you know, what what is it not uh, to name yourself? Which which one is that? Is that Kuji Chagalia? No, that's self determination. Yes, that's her, yeah. You it's very Kuji Chagalia of you. <laughs> so so listen, my name is Emily. Like that is my name. Um, but when I decided to like actually you know take on being an artist and a composer, um, I wanted to maintain my actual name, and I just you know changed the spelling. And then Sankofa, do you, you know what Sankofa means? Yes, return. Okay, yes, yeah, yeah. Come so back, back. Sankofa, back. go back yeah, and get so, it. Come on. Yes. Exactly, exactly. And so for me, um, in terms of my work, I've always been intrigued with the past and kind of like, um, kind of finding those hidden gems from the past that people probably forgot about or just hadn't been talked about, and kind of revisiting them in my work in the present. And even just like, it just ties to my life in general, where there are a lot of things that happen over the course of, you know, my life that re come around, come back around from the past full circle moments, um, really just connecting dots from the past, the present, the now and into the future. So it just, it just aligns. So how does one become a composer? I guess you got to know music. Uh, and Ooh. Emily Sankofa, you, you're not only composed for Three Ways on Hulu, but you also did Lizzo's <laughs> Watch Out for the Big Girls with I a did. lot of horrors. And uh, <laughs> you did that one as well. And Step Up High Water 2018. What What is your background that led you into composing? And then how did you get these opportunities? Yeah, so that's a great question. So... In general, I have a musical family, come from a very musical family. Um, literally, I was in the choir at two. Mm -hmm. And from there, bands, marching band. I went to Hampton University, marched in the band at Hampton University. Um, and so really, the beginning of my journey was really when I got here on Earth. But in terms of film scoring, it was a teacher at Hampton. Uh, I think it was my junior or senior year. He was listening to some music that I had done for an assignment. And he's like, you know, you should investigate uh, film scoring because your sound is very cinematic. And, you know, when I went to Hampton, I originally went there to kind of like be a producer and um, because I, I, I majored in music recording. And so I quickly found out that, like, listen, you can't apply to be a producer. You can't apply to be a composer either. So I just had to, like, figure out and reroute. And even just having, um, because we learned how to be like, you know, recording engineers, mixing engineers. And so that was kind of an entry point into the world of audio, sound. And I kind of made my way through there. After Hampton, I went to SCAD, which is the Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, got my master's in sound design. And that was really like where everything took off because we were immersed in filmmaking courses, sound design courses. We literally learned everything from production sound to post um, music supervision, everything. And, and SCAD was interesting because it was a very collaborative um, environment. So we got to work with kids in the animation department, motion media, film, literally everything. Um, and so that's kind of like the beginning. But in terms of the opportunities, it was just a matter of um, the network. That's the start. Um, because like I said, SCAD was very collaborative. I think like really if maybe a few months after I graduated from SCAD, I went straight out to L.A., and a group of us that had all graduated at the same time from SCAD kind of went out together. Um, and it was interesting because when I first got out there, I'm thinking like, man, all right, 
I just graduated from SCAD. Like I'm about to hit the ground running, getting the biggest projects and all that. And it just didn't happen that way. And so it took a lot of us, a lot of uh, us collaborating with one another. And when somebody would get like a gig at one network, there's like, hey, uh, these folks, I want to crew up with these people. Let me do this. And, you know, Community. just connecting, so you, yeah, connecting that's for each other. I love, I love, I love that, Emily, um, you know, because as you're talking, I was uh, just uh, yesterday interviewed Chuck D and he wanted to be mm. a graphic designer. So he mm-hmm. went to school to learn how to do that for right. art for artists like he was like i want the rap artists to have the same kind of images that kiss and you know mega death and all of these you know uh groups these rock groups have it's like m- the image is everything right and so he got into rap through art and so yep. he's still an artist you know when as you're talking one of the reasons why i think it's important for you to be on today there's somebody in a car right now with their parents thinking about <laughs> going to school and yep. for many of our uh, young people, it's rapper, it's mm-hmm. basketball player. But if it's not that, then it's engineer, lawyer, doctor, you know, right. and right. and they may have interest in these other things. Maybe I want to be the next, you know, her or, yeah. you know, something. But this scoring for TV and movies, who talks about that? You know? Right. Right. You know, what's interesting about that, too, was that. When when my professor kind of pointed me in this in this direction, I started doing research to see like who I knew that was a film composer outside of like the Hans Zimmer's and um, just all of the composers that we typically know, John Williams. And um, there are many others, but I didn't really see anybody that looked like me. So I was like, wait a minute, he's on to something because I knew I was an anomaly when he brought this to my attention. So I'm like, OK this might be an interesting pivot point because number one, at this point, I don't have a lot of competition and I can kind of like blitz my way, still do music, but blitz my way into um, the industry without a lot of competition. And even now there are so many other people that are blossoming, like Amanda Jones, Shonda Dancy, like Catherine Bostic is actually an OG. She's one of my mentors. Um, And she was one of the people who actually really spoke life into me in the industry um, when, when we kind of met, but like, um, I just realized that, hey, there, this is a lane that not a lot of people are going down. And this really turned out to be much more fruitful um, than, you know, being a producer. And I'm still a producer. I'm still an artist. But it's still kind of like this gave me um, a different key, you know, to a, to a different door. You know what I mean? To still continue to do what I want to do in terms of just like creating music and even storytelling. Um, so, yeah, so, you're, you're yeah. definitely right about that. I have a question. First of all, I have Absolutely. about 30 questions for you, Emily. But hey, I'm gonna start. Uh, all right. So first of all, <laughs> what is a cinematic sound? You said your your uh, teacher said you have a cinematic sound. That's the first question. Right. Listen, do you see the world in music? Like, do you mm-hmm. um, like I'm a producer by by nature. So I look at things. I think, oh, that'd be a great story or whatever. Do you look at the world and think, ah, that needs a music bed. That story, needs, you know, but so those, those are a couple of questions off the top of my head. What's right. cinematic sound first? Right. So, so when, when he said I had a cinematic sound, I think what he was alluding to was the fact that like my music, it sounded like it belonged in a film. It belonged under some type of narrative. It was telling a story in a way that Maybe, you know, a a song that's just produced for like the radio or whatever. Those songs tell stories, but they don't necessarily like they're not underscoring a visual or they're not they're not telling a story in a way that that sometimes prompts visual like in your mind. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think that's what he was alluding to, because even then, like my mom actually used to take us to to the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. Um, She played like. uh Oh, she played so many classical songs in the car on the way to school. So it was like my brain was already exposed to these things. And it's it's kind of interesting looking back because a lot of those moments and things that my parents exposed me to kind of led up to this moment anyway, which is another Sankofa moment, to be honest. Um, and so, you know, that's that's really like it was just embedded in in my essence musically already. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, And then for your second question, um, in terms of just like seeing the world musically, um, sometimes it really just depends. Like, I don't know if you all know John Cage, but one of one of his biggest philosophers. So he was an avant-garde composer. Um, And 
it's 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 kind of like you're either into it or you're not but a lot of his a lot of his um music was very like avant-garde and his philosophy was that everything is music right so the sounds that you hear outside um just your environment the way we perceive what we're listening to changes every time we're in a different environment because there are other sounds around us that are now a part of the music so in that way that's how i think about sound and music um and sometimes when it gets into like a more controlled environment where I'm composing music for film and TV, music then becomes a design function because now I am tasked with figuring out how to make people feel something or think about something ahead of it possibly happening or um, connect dots throughout the TV series or the film, you know what I'm saying? So. It's like, it just depends on what, what I'm doing, um, where my brain is at the time. Like, it's just, it's, it's a very expansive thing for me to be honest. So yeah. Emily Sankofa, do you play an instrument? Yes. Uh, drums, uh, voice, of course, voice is the actual, it's actually the first human instrument. Um, and so you sing, so on this, uh, three ways. Oh, my voice is all throughout that sound. It's all throughout that score. (laughs) all throughout that score. Okay. Yeah. What, what does it sound like? So this, this film in general is a sex comedy, right? Okay. So, all right. Yeah. Convince me to watch it. Cause I saw it on Hulu and I was like, three people having sex. Mm, Listen, I'm trying I'm to tell, gonna pass. I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to tell you, everybody says that. And then when they watch it, they're like, okay, this is the best thing I've seen all year. It can't, I literally, be, it can't be better than Will Tritt, the shrinking, Ted Lasso. That's what I'm watching listen, right now. Carnival listen, Row. Come on, listen, Emily. Yes. Listen, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. I don't even, I'm not even going to try to convince you. You just watch it and then come back and let okay, me know. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to watch it tonight. <laughs> Emily, do you, how important is it, do you think, for uh, children to be exposed to music early on? I mean, yeah. I didn't come from a musical family, but my children yeah. through school were exposed to music. And now my daughter, she's, you know, she sings that she's mm-hmm. music just emanates from her. Is yeah. it important you think for, for young people? Cause Karen earlier in the show, we were also talking about how kids who don't learn, you know, necessarily I could like in the, 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 what, what is it? The right brain or which, whatever brain mm. it is, whatever side that when they don't learn that way, that sometimes they can learn musically. So, yeah. So, so- I'm a huge advocate for STEAM, which is like the science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, right? Because music is physics, sound is physics, right? So there's math, you're counting, right? Engineering comes in when you have to go into the studio, like, you know what I'm saying? Technology, we're dealing with technology when we're, when we're creating music and all that. So it's all together. And sometimes I feel like, when people discuss arts, they remove it from the academic elements of the things that we experience every day that are like people consider to be boring, but really it's like everything is art. It's all tied together. So I definitely think that that music is important because um, it just helps. Definitely it helps like children retain information. I mean, we grew up singing songs. The, the first things we learned were singing songs. So it's like, at what point do we switch and say, uh, this isn't important anymore. We can remove music from the equation. It's like, no, let's continue. Let's continue integrating this into what we're doing day to day. And even in general, like music is a huge tool that helps people get through different situations in life. Uh, I mean, it's like the center of almost every important thing that we might have ever experienced. So it's like, what are we doing? So of course, <laughs> music is definitely an integral part of, I think, education and should be something that's prioritized as much as the science, the tech, the engineering, the math, all of that. Mm. So two-year-old that. Emily uh, singing in the <laughs> choir, uh, mm-hmm. where where are you in the world? Where, where are your people? Where are you from? And... I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you went to Hampton and not Spelman? Oh, funny thing. My mom went to Spelman. So I literally grew up on that campus pretty much. I was, I was there every summer at the sports camp. I danced at the the dance. Uh, they had a dance school there. I was there for that throughout the year. My mom went to different events. So I'm like, I know that campus like the back of my hand. I had plenty of friends that went there. So for me, it was like, 
the biggest thing was that they didn't have the major that I wanted because I definitely was registered. I had my roommate. I was there. And then literally the day, actually it was March 15th, 2012. Mm -hmm. I remember I walked into, I went to Westlake High School, by the way. I walked into the counselor's center and I just saw the application for Hampton and I started going through it. And I'm like, wait a minute, they have music recording tech? Like what? I went I went home that day. The application deadline was that day. Oh. I went home that day and did the application, crossed my fingers and I was like, let the chips fall where they may. And as soon as I got in, I changed my decision immediately. And what's crazy too is that was when they first started doing um, online applications. So I was able to expedite it instead of mailing it in because a lot of my other apps, I, I ended up mailing in. So it was just kind of like, that was supposed to be what it was supposed to be. All right. So, so what church are you singing in and what was the song that you mm. remember having to sing in the choir? Um, so I went, to, I grew up in Ben Hill United Methodist church. Um, and what's interesting about that too, is that, um, I I'll just say that I remember, um, a third grade, we record, like our church recorded an album. Um, and the choir director, um, Mr. Nate, which is also, I think he's my godfather. He, uh, <laughs> wrote this song called hide their Holy spirit. And that was the first album that I was ever on in my entire life. Um, so I got to experience the, the production element, like the recording over and over, just like all of the bells and whistles. And I mean, like, to be honest, my church, that played a heavy role into like what I gravitate to musically too, because the band, I used to go to church. I'm like, I got to sit by the band. I need to hear the band because it was, it's, it, they were good. And actually, I don't, you, do you guys know Chuck Harmony? Mm, I, I'm, no, I, I stick to the rivers and lakes that I'm used to. I, I tend to have so, very, so yeah, very, look up the group Lewis York when you get a chance. Oh, Lewis but, York was on. Oh, wait. wait exactly. Smith's like, they were on the show. Yeah. They, they were just on the show <laughs> yes. like three weeks ago. Damn Listen, it. I was Chuck, like, I don't even know. Smith, Smith's like, what is wrong with you? <sighs> Chuck what? played keys yes, at my Chuck. church. Okay, that he is wild. Keys at my church. So, what would the oh. church think about three ways? That's where I was going. <laughs> Wait, say that again. <laughs> what would your church people feel about this this movie? This this three ways that you uh, they're gonna yeah. laugh. Then they're <laughs> also gonna everybody. How did everybody get here? <laughs> not not with a three Look, way. Emily, listen, not with a three way. <laughs> <laughs> listen. Sex is at the foundation of. <laughs> Okay. human civilization right okay uh, all right but yeah. but i will say i'm telling you it's funnier than it is risque i'll okay. say that all right i like it um finally i want to you know the finances how you know when did you start getting paid when did this become something that you're like not am i just doing my passion but i'm making a good living mm -hmm. um let's see duh, 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 duh. so in general, I've always been about my business, right? Um, and sometimes, in some situations to my detriment because I prioritize the money before the relationship, right? And so I had to learn when to prioritize like just doing something for free and focusing on building the relationship and when to just like, nah, this is what it is, like point blank period. Um, and so there was a there was a lot of learning that went into play because the the entertainment industry is very interesting. And even with um, like, I don't know, I'll say what, what it's 2023. Um, is the money good, Emily? That's what I want to know. No, is it no, worth it? No, the money it? is good. The okay, money, that's what I want to know. Yeah. Are you making no. a good living? As no, a I am. Okay. No, I am. Her, yes, I am. Absolutely. No, I am. I am. And it and it's definitely tears to it. And I'm getting up. I'm I'm moving up the ladder. But it's like I'm trying to get to actually you. You asked a great question. There was a of course. A, this um, is what I do. No, <laughs> this is what I do. There, there was an article that came out that had like 10, 10 composers on it. And they were a part of the top grossing films. I think it was like, it was like over a billion dollars in terms of the, the, how much the films gross. And I'm like, looking at the list, there's no women on that list. Mm. There's no black women on the list. So I'm like, bet I see what the, I see what the bar is. I'm coming for that because soon I'm going to be on that list because it doesn't make sense to me for none of us to be represented 
in that list you know what i'm saying right. it's like why are we not why are we not scoring the top top studio films you know what i'm saying why are we not in that conversation and there are there, again i'm not i'm not the only one at this point and i i wasn't in general but it's still like there are more of us that are coming into the space um chris browers too like i don't know if you guys know him but he did he's done a lot um he did bridgerton um oh. inventing anna uh, he did King Richard, like he's great too. He's one of my peers, but like, I mean, I'm coming for it. I'm coming for it. Does it, Emily, is it easier now in some ways because of technology? Now you can upload your stuff to SoundCloud or, you know, it's, it's not like in the days when, you know, without dating myself, when I was first getting my first TV <laughs> job and I was running around with three quarter inch debt tape under my arm and going into people's offices and saying, could you right. please look at this videotape of right. me? Like, is it like, is it somewhat easier to, to get heard or discovered because of say social media and some of the apps that are out there? Yeah. So that's def social media has definitely played a huge role um, because you're kind of able to market yourself in ways, like you said, that you weren't before. Um, and the that's other how thing we, is, that's how we connected. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so it's yeah. like, you know, even before, so right now, now I have an agent and he and I are bill, he and I work together to target um, people that I want to work with. Uh, we're looking at, you know, different projects and we're like, Oh, go, go ahead. No, I, we have a caller. I want to get to before oh, okay, we only got okay. a minute left. Matthew in Los Angeles. Oh, we only got a minute, Matthew quickly. Hi, welcome. I'll be, I'll be very fast. Miss Karen. I won't take up too much of your time. Emily. I just want to say I'm proud of you and I love you. I'm driving oh down God. the street and I saw your name on my radio screen and almost pulled over for screaming and so much glee. Uh, oh. Miss Karen, this is my, my niece in law. Can I say that? My niece-in-law. Um, and just, Ms. Karen, you create so much space for black beauty and just creativity. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Emily is here spreading the black beauty that she's creating in this world, it's, it's just kismet that I was able to pick up on this and that you're able to spread it across the world in such a fantastic way. Please, both of you, keep on doing the fantastic work that you're doing. I love it, and I love you. Oh, oh wow. wow. Matthew. Wow, Matthew. That's your uncle? Yo, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, so my wife, her her uncle that's his husband so okay. yes oh, oh look, at the, look at that wow. look at that yeah, yeah. space that's for crazy. everybody this is what <laughs> it looks like diversity yes emily we gotta run appreciate you Thank nice you. meeting you emily Thank sankofa you. and i'm gonna watch three ways because of you and i yes. did not regret it I'm gonna, I'm gonna 